Richard and Kerry Aubrey farm in partnership on their 140 hectare farm. They were looking for a challenge when they purchased their Raglan Harbour coastal property in 2009. The Aubreys have since transformed the property with extensive protection and conservation work. They put eight hectares of bush under a QE2 covenant and have fenced off and planted a number of non-productive areas with flaxes, natives and poplars. On this property we predominantly run grazers. We run a couple of hundred dairy bulls for a local farmer. We graze them on a weight gain contract from April till October. We also run about 150 dairy heifers on a May to May basis and we have the calves coming on in December. And we also run a herd of beef cows, which we sell the progeny as weaners. And we also trade about 30 to 50 animals, which we buy late winter and sell before Christmas. I actually work off farm and that's enabled me to develop the farm to how we want it. Obviously we've spent um, a fair bit of money on infrastructure, fences, races, water, and a fair bit of fertiliser as well, just to get the farm up and running so it's easier to manage. So in effect, it really only takes one of us an hour and a half a day to do all the stock work and a little bit of time on the weekends and when things need to be done of a major nature, we actually get contractors in who can do the job a lot better than I ever can and do it in a quick and timely manner rather than myself using up all my recreational time. We definitely run it as a business and the aim is to make a profit, which we have done the last few years. We run quite a strong economic surplus from the property. Now that we've got the infrastructure set up, we've probably increased the stocking rate by about 30%, um, which is always flowing to the bottom line. So we've sort of set it up for the future as well. So when we get closer to retirement, whenever that may be, that the farm um, has got all the basics, all the fundamentals all in place, so we can just run it as a day-to-day -day business without having to worry about any future capital expenditure. When we first came here, it was really quite run down. I didn't even know that this part was actually on the property. And so when I went to have a look and a walk, I couldn't believe it really, because it was just so beautiful. But obviously there'd been stock in here, so it wasn't quite as lush as it is now. So, um, you know, Rich and I did some investigation and decided that it would be lovely to keep it um, in a covenant and to protect it. So this is why we decided to put it into the QE2. Rewa Rewa, Rewa Rewa oh, seedlings yeah. coming up. So they're in, they're in here with the birds that brought them in. Rich and Kerry approached QE2 to yep. see whether yep. this piece yep. of bush would be able to be brought into a covenant. We would have come out and assessed the yep. block, yep. see what its attributes were. We then put a, a case to our board to see whether that we'll be able to put protection on it. So we're talking about long-term protection. This is in perpetuity. Uh, in this case, the block hadn't been fenced, so it required fencing. Um, we, in partnership with the regional council and Kerry and Richard, um, went shares in that fence. The entire block didn't need fencing because there's a coastal boundary on the back. So once that was completed, the covenant was registered, and from there on, we provide a, an advice service. We come out every two years to do a monitoring visit to see how it's progressing see if they've got any issues and how we might be able to help to progress that. It's a relatively large block at eight hectares. Fairly established Tanikaha Rimu forest. There is very little of it left. That's one of the big bonuses if there's a block like this. It's um, relatively rare in the green desert in Waikato. It's particularly unique, this one, with of bellbirds in here. With the mower being around, yeah. It's big enough to be quite sustainable. Once the understory and the edges have uh, regenerated, it'll, it'll protect the interior of it more, and so its regeneration should accelerate. Here's one of our photo points marked here. Um, also, we've got all these pinged on our on our GPS, so we'd be looking to replicate the photo that was taken two years ago and each two years prior to that. The first thing we're looking for is that the fences are still intact and there's no stock breach anywhere and the state of the fences. So repeating these photo points and then we're looking for the changes in the vegetation in here to see what's happening. We want to see it regenerating, noting weeds and things that might be progressing. So we'd record that each time and then try and uh, gauge what was actually happening. The Covenant is still owned by the uh, property owners and 
We expect them to maintain, obviously, the fences, keep the stock out of the block. We also expect them to do weed control and whatever they can do in terms of pest control. In this case, they have a program running in here for um, baiting for possums and so on. The block is part of the ripe area and protection of the harbour here, so it's covering quite an extensive piece of the coastline, thereby protecting that, that runoff that's going into this part. And then it links up with the other plantings that um, the Aubreys have done here around the edges of the, of the harbour, so it's quite special in its connectivity in that sense. As those blocks develop down there, it'll also be a, a corridor for the birds to move through. It feels really good to know that it's actually going to always be here. I think that's a lovely thing because nothing's going to ruin it. It's always going to be here, it's always going to be protective and when we're gone, you know, our children and their children are going to be able to enjoy it. With all the infrastructure we've spent on fencing off the harbour, the QE2, the waterways, it has required a substantial financial investment which really has been assisted with our off-farm income initially to get that, all that project work done. And we've had funding from Environment Waikato through the Regional Council, their um, Clean Stream program, and also the QE2 Trust is funding the fencing as well. So we have had it um, subsidised, and also the Whaingaroa Harbour Care have helped us with all the uh, native plantings originally, so we planted about 9,000 plants. Every year we're looking at doing new projects and always continuing to improve. As we find pockets of area that aren't productive, we'll fence them off and plant them up and perhaps even more subdivision and a bit more water just to make it effectively grow more grass and make more money. That's what it's all about. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.